Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Emily and I'm one of the staff, full-time staff members at the Data Science Education Program with the Division of Data Science and Information. Um, uh, I'm John B. I'm a fourth year uh, computer science and data science double major, um, and I'm one of the peer consulting team leads. Um, so to, today we'll be talking about the Data Peer Consulting Program, which is a fairly new program on campus, but it's um, one of the initiatives that we're really excited about. And so the title to the slides is Data and Computing for All, because we're hoping to reach you know all students across campus, undergrad, graduate, maybe even staff and faculty. Um, so. There's been an exploding and pervasive demand for data science on campus. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, I don't know how many of you are UC Berkeley affiliated, but um, the data science undergraduate major just launched in fall 2018 and it was highly anticipated. Lots of students are really interested. We sent out a form um, in like trying to get interest from students and thousands have filled it out, so it's um, really highly in demand. And this spring we're hoping to launch the minor as well, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. Um, and also across campus, American cultures want um, to integrate data science into their courses. And what the AC courses are is, it's a course that is required for all UC Berkeley undergrads to fulfill in order to graduate. And it's a course that um, engages students into critically thinking about race, ethnicity, and culture in terms of American society. And so um, they are hoping to put Jupyter Notebook modules in their courses, which is really exciting. Um, there's also hope to support graduate students and even staff on campus. So we currently, the peer consulting program currently has a tiny pilot with the um, grad students in the Goldman School of Public Policy to convert um, all their assignments and their learning from SCADA to R, just because they feel that SCADA is really outdated now. Um, and even supporting staff. So some of the staff members from uh, the services accessibility team have come to us um, wanting to learn more about how we can help them with their data visualization needs. And so they work with um, very large data sets um, and they sometimes have difficulty um, manipulating them. And it's really cool to see what they work on because they look across campus to see which departments um, are using B courses and things like that and how accessible they are to the people who use them. Um, and so all of our data pick consultants are working on cool projects like that and it's very exciting. Um, and of course, uh, as you guys saw from OCF, open source tools are becoming the standard and we're hoping to move away from proprietary tools. So this um, stems our program. So in fall 2017, this program started as a collaboration between the Center for Connected Learning, which is in Moffitt Library, um, the D-Lab, which was mentioned earlier, and us, the Division of Data Science and Information. Um, and then in summer 2018, we collaborated with the Educational Technology Services and then in 2019, we received funding from the Student Tech Fund, which um, pulls about, I think, 47 or $50 from every student's tuition to support um, new technology initiatives on campus. And in fall 2019, we happily started collaborating with Amy Nieser from Research IT. Um, we have two of our peer consultants who are also joint RIT interns, and those students will be helping us learn from Amy and RIT um, about cloud computing infrastructure, and so we're very excited. And then moving forward from Stream 2020 onwards, we hope to strengthen all these collaborations on campus and you know, have our undergraduate peer consultants kind of serve as the very beginning of the network, you know, because they have such a large reach, there are so many of them, maybe they can serve as a first point of contact for you know, researchers on campus, um, advanced students working on projects, things like that, and then you know, it kind of would branch out. So we're really excited about that, and here's um, one of our new flyers for spring 2020. Um, it currently doesn't include cloud computing, but we're really hoping that with this uh, collaboration with Research IT that we can include that. Um, and we staff drop in office hours at Moffitt Library, which is in the center of campus, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. So if anyone ever needs help, they can literally just come into the library, get the resources that they need. Um, and um, aside from drop in office hours, we also do appointments. So if people can't attend for some reason 11 to 4 p.m., um, they can email us, set up a consultation with our students. Um, we are also hoping this semester to do workshops, um, and so this would be open to everyone. Um, they'd be data literacy workshops, data visualization, cloud computing, resources and accessibility, things like that. Um, and so, like I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of collaborations with this project. Um, there's us at the Division of Data Science and Information. There's a library, um, and I think that's a feature of the fourth floor and ETS Research IT and um, DLab. And what we're really excited about with DLab 2 is this cascading mentorship model. And so if you guys are familiar with DLab, they have um, 
a very like wide array of graduate students, postdocs, fellows, um, staff, and even uh, faculty that work with them. And this cascading mentorship model that I'm talking about is that we hope that the graduate students kind of serve as mentors for our undergraduates, who will then become leaders and also mentor more undergraduates in that way that the program will keep growing and scaling and more undergraduates will have the tools that they need to help others and do consultations. Um, and so our vision for 2020 is to support learners across the spectrum. And so I mentioned earlier that a new major was launched and this is really exciting because all students from all domains, social sciences, humanity, they're realizing that they all can do data science too um, and computing. It's not just for people who are from a STEM background. And so they're really excited for everything because all of their, you know, like their legal studies classes, public health classes are now including Jupyter notebook modules that include data science and computing but they might not have the resources that they need to be supported. So if, you know, if they figure like, I don't know how to run all my cells, it's not working, where do I go? Then they can come to the Moffitt Library and learn from the consultants um, you know, how to do these very basic things and then it'll keep growing as they learn more and more. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, with the collaboration with Research IT, we're hoping to um, increase accessibility to cloud computing and making sure that people are aware of the resources on campus, um, they know where to go, they know how to use it efficiently, things like that. Um, and of course, this is for the undergrads as well. This is not just for us and for campus, it's to make sure that they are growing, that the, the things that they're learning in their classes are being strengthened by teaching others. And so this is really great for them to kind of take into industry or grad school or wherever they want to go with these skills that they're practicing. Um, and so just a little bit of how we're training our undergraduate students. Um, they all have to take a Data 198 course, which is a data science instructional support seminar where they learn about, they learn a lot of cognitive science, like how do people learn? Um, what's the best way to teach students from wide audiences? And um, they also learn how to create advanced Jupyter notebooks, how to um, actually do the design of the instruction. And they also attend DLab intensives, if you guys are familiar with that. I put a little screenshot here. Um, the int intensives meaning that they do workshops on like Python, R, and it'll, it'll be like four hours long. There'll be multiple workshops and it's really engaging and really um, great for our students. And um, we also have graduate student mentors who are fellows in DLab who will be mentoring the undergraduates um, because they have either you know, experience in industry, experience on campus, and they're really great mentors. And then we're hoping to also collaborate more closely, as I keep saying, um, with research IT and provide trainings for them. And um, there's also this new technology on campus that not many people know about because I just learned about recently, um, LinkedIn Learning. And they have pathways for you know, courses um, similar to DLab, where if you want to learn Python, you can find a pathway and it'll, it'll tell you like Python fundamentals, basics, advanced, et cetera, et cetera. And so we hope to put our students through all these resources that already exist on campus. Um, and so this is kind of a screenshot from our website. So we put all our students on there, we put their availabilities, their expertise, and a little bit of their bio so that people can recognize a friendly face and when they go to the service, they know who to look for. Um, and so uh, we have Johnny here and she's one of our two team leads and I wanted her to you know, give you guys her first-hand experience and thoughts on the program, um, data science and computing on campus, anything you want to talk about. Uh, yeah, of course. So I think this is like a really cool and unique opportunity, especially because, um, as we all know, like data science is only really enabled in like, the past couple of years because of large scale computing. Um, and because of that, I think this really enables people all across campus and in all different uh, industries in general to use very large data sets and to use data at very large scale. And um, I think through this program, what we're trying to really achieve is like data science and computing for all, where people from all different domains um, are able to come and seek help. And I think um, one thing as a peer consultant, um, this is my fourth semester doing it, um, something that I've really realized is that um, a lot of people um, within like a lot of different domains, so for example, um, last spring, I got a lot of students who are master's students who are trying to write their theses in like uh, different types of domains. So some of them were trying to use like natural languaging processes, um, uh, natural language processing in um, like uh, in, in English, or a lot of people were doing agricultural or, or environmental studies. And they have very large data sets which they're trying to analyze, but they don't know how to even get started on how to analyze them. Or they don't know that these are the different tools and resources available to them that they can uh, easily use. 
And um, I think as career consultants, it's really rewarding to be able to take our experience that we get um, in the classroom and like from all the different projects that we do um, and allow other people to like do their own research um, and um, basically provide them the tools to um, like whether they're trying to learn, like work on class projects or research um, their own research projects or personal projects, um, but give them the, those like tools on letting them know like hey if you really want to analyze this large of a data set um, it's only like these thousand, like a couple thousand columns so maybe you can use pandas but if like if it's a very large um, column if it's a very large data set you might have to like put it on cloud and then use something else to do that um, and like most people like who are not like actively in like computer science or data science classes or don't who have, or who just don't have that background um, or in those departments who don't have whose professors and advisors don't have that background really don't know like how to even get started so a lot of the times they just manually end up doing it and spending like 50 plus hours on something that you could have just done in five minutes so I think like that like power to like um, bridge this community um, and to spread the knowledge is like really rewarding in my experience um, and this is why I really believe in the program and um, I think it's a really unique opportunity that we're really excited to kind of grow as well. Um, yeah, and then just reiterating all the collaborations that I was mentioning, it's not just collaborations with other um, you know staff level groups on campus, it's also um, we're trying to integrate existing student efforts. And so um, Data Science Nexus is kind of like this coalition of a lot of student-run clubs on campus. And so if we receive students that are trying to um, get a consultation on a, on a topic or area that we're not super familiar with, or I should say we, that the students aren't familiar with, then we will definitely kind of you know refer out because we're trying to create a network of consultations here. And we know we want to connect all the resources on campus, whether it's DLab at the graduate level, research IT, or even the students at the undergrad level. <clears throat> um, and yeah, so another thing is that um, John was talking about how you can, how the students can take what they learn in the classroom and then you know reuse that and get stronger and learn from it. So um, a lot of the students learn in their classes about this life cycle, but some of that life cycle has gaps, and so we want to make sure that. We're building these workshops so that students can come and learn more about visualization or machine learning, um, so that they can come and learn about cloud computing, you know, how to set up your research methodology, things like that. Um, and the growth of this program complements the growth of the data science in general on campus. And so um, I think I mentioned earlier data science modules. So um, these are short explorations of data science in classes that are outside of STEM traditionally. So they're usually in Jupyter Notebooks. Um, so if a, if a class in, let's say, public health wants to explore a specific data set, they can um, have these modules put into their classes. And so a lot of these are popping up um, on campus. And like I mentioned earlier, the AC courses are trying to adopt that. And AC courses reach 40 departments across campus. And so you can really see that the reach is very wide. Um, there are a lot of data science research projects at the undergraduate level that are happening right now, um, and our program also aims to support research projects in that realm. And like I mentioned earlier, the major and the minor, and also the graduate certificate program, which I believe is in the iSchool. And so um, this program, we think, is very important because there's this huge growth of data science, but not enough to support it at the moment. Um, and so, yeah, like John being a coach earlier, it's something that we're really excited about. Um, oh, before that. And I think that one of the great challenges that we've been facing so far is just outreach and marketing because there's just so many of us and, you know, so many undergrads. And so we're hoping that, you know, by coming here, you guys are learning about the program and you guys are as, as excited as excited as us. Um, and if you know people on campus or maybe even outside campus who are interested in utilizing these services, uh, please let us know. Please contact us and we'd be really happy to help and partner. Yeah, thank you. And here is our website. Um, and I should probably put emails on there, but I forgot to do that. So we'll get it to you or find us afterwards. Thank you. <laughs>